I want to go down the list of games, and I want to make sure that we've at least gone on the record with how we feel about this. Oklahoma, for example, plays Nebraska this Saturday, and that one's in Lincoln. At one point, maybe three weeks ago, I thought we would be there over being in Auburn because, well, we've never been to Lincoln for one. And number two, I didn't exactly foretell that they were going to fall in another country to Northwestern. They have. And then to add on, insult to injury, they've lost to Georgia Southern. So we're not there, but we'll talk about it. Oklahoma's an 11-point favorite. A lot of you may think 21, 24, 28. No, that's not the point spread on this. Oklahoma has not left home yet, and so they're going to Lincoln. Here's the field, and you've seen it as well as I have in the past. Number one, if a guy gets hurt and you think it's going to detrimentally impact the team, the exact opposite happens because there's this galvanizing impact in the locker room. And then you've also seen, as well as I have, when a coach gets fired, And it's like this giant release, just and then everyone plays for some reason at a higher level than they had been. Well, that's a threat here, and I'm going to acknowledge that. That's why I'm saying there's an out, maybe an outside possibility of an upset. But the thing I think about with Nebraska is what were the problems under Scott Frost? We talked about it the other night. Couldn't for the life of me tell you what their identity is. Uh, They had no discernible improvement defensively. Just a lot of that football stuff, you know, that pesky football stuff. Well, here's the question. If you're going to sell me that Oklahoma's going to fall here, you got to sell me that that stuff got corrected, that, that Mickey Joseph, God bless him, could correct that in six days. I don't know if they can. Like, I, I watched Georgia Southern just march up and down the field, had over 600 yards total offense in Lincoln. That doesn't get solved overnight. Uh, you could get an inspired effort from Nebraska and still have them fall 38 to 20. So I'm going to put about a three on this one on the upset scale, one to 10. I think Oklahoma, actually, conversely, I think Oklahoma is going to use this game to sort of send a little message. You know, they've played inferior competition at home so far. It's time for Brent Venables to go out on the road the first time, and they assert themselves in the Big 12. Here's one that a lot of you thought we were going to be present for, and it was just never in the cards, and that's Georgia at South Carolina. Uh, Reason number one, according to Stats and Info, the line on this thing's 25, depending on which book you look at right now. Uh, It could be bad. Okay, this is also an ingredient for a shock the world type upset. The problem is there's a lot of not invincibility. I don't want to use that word at all. I'm actually going to talk about Georgia a little bit later on in this vein. But there are a lot of elements about that Georgia team that travel. Bama looked vulnerable last week. I do not suspect that Georgia will look nearly as vulnerable because I just think they have their affairs in order along the lines of scrimmage and can we just be frank for a second? And I know we got a lot of folks watching in and around Columbia. So I'm going to I'm gonna talk low for a second. You guys know you have problems on the lines of scrimmage. You know that. You know that and I know that. So we're not breaking any news here tonight. At what point, at, at, at what number in the turnover column do you have to be plus? At what sort of implosion offensively for Georgia do you have to rise to? For me to see this upset happening. I'm not asking you to cover now. This is a segment about upsets. How are you going to pull the upset off? I can't find it because it was really not even as close as the score indicated last week when you went to Fayetteville. I know all about williams Bryce Stadium. No one sings the praises of South Carolina's home environment more than me. I know what you got there. I also know that you got a team coming in there that over the span of four quarters can kind of take a crowd out of it. Uh, They're doing that whole noon kickoff thing with you guys that I love, but everyone else hates. I'm going to put this at a two. It's really hard. As much as I like the program, it's really hard for me to see it happening. Here's one we'll go a little bit higher on the upset meter on. Cal is playing Notre Dame. The line is 11. Believe it or not, Notre Dame's favored to win a football game. Uh, Noteworthy, that is, because this would be Marcus Freeman's first win as Notre Dame head coach. Freeman's winless right here. Here's going to be the talking point for those of you interested in such things. People are going to tell you, Cal, hmm, Justin Wilcox team out there, they're traveling to South Bend, and they really get it done through the air offensively. And the one thing that I can take solace in, this is them talking, not me, more casual approach, if you know what I mean. The one thing that I can take solace in is Notre Dame can defend the pass, pass defense, really a strong set for Notre Dame. That's true. Here's a weakness, scoring. Notre Dame can't score. They're really bad at scoring points. And so when you limit possessions, when you limit just the amount of dent you can put in the scoreboard, there is so much variability and potentially so much volatility and outcome. What I mean by that is, you know, if Cal has a little success through the air, but you're going to hang 38, it doesn't matter. 
It was 38 to 24 and 38 to 13. It's just a win for you, no matter what. But if you're only going to hang 17 for me, then guess what the difference is in 20 to 17 and 17 to 14? It's the difference between a win and a loss. Uh, I'm not going to say must win because it's not a must win. They really need this one in South Bend. I mean, they really need to stretch the margin. Just need to get the bad taste out of their mouth. I'm going to put this as a five, only because I haven't been given any kind of confidence in Notre Dame being able to get margin on a team. I mean, they got, they got bullied by Marshall last week. And I know a lot of you guys did not watch that game. I did. I went back and watched it for you. And I'm telling you, they got bullied. They got picked up, put on skates, and pushed around. And Tim O'Malley, who writes for Irish Illustrated, kind of put it very succinctly. He said, if they would have played this game further, another one or two quarters, it wouldn't have been a situation where Notre Dame caught up. It would have been a situation where Marshall stretched the lead even further. He's right. That's exactly what kind of game was unfolding up there. So this is a five. I could absolutely see that upset happening. UTSA at Texas is supremely fascinating. We were just out there last week, and of course you've got the quarterback conundrum at this point, if you will, with Texas. Uh, Quinn Ewers is out until probably the Oklahoma game. Hudson Card's saying all the right things out there. I talked to some people around the program today who remain, what would I call it, I guess cautiously skeptical? There's not optimism, cautiously skeptical that he can play. If he doesn't, Charles Wright, win your trivia contest on Friday night. Charles Wright is the starting quarterback if it drops to that level on the depth chart for Texas. UTSA, really, really good on third down so far. Uh, That is actually how they are almost beating Houston. It's how they did beat Army. Really, really good on third down. Here's what I'm thinking about. While all the attention is going to be on the Texas quarterback situation, it is imperative that defense steps up and wins the game for Texas because you got to buy time. Eventually, you're going to get your quarterback room right, and they will be, by what I watched last week, a Big 12 championship caliber team. Doesn't matter if you got multiple losses already on the resume. Now, this is not a conference game. It's very much an in-state game, but it's not a conference game. My point is, if you got to win the thing 19 to 10, and have defense make multiple stops, then win the thing 19-10 to and have defense make multiple stops. They put Bama in a blender last week. And so if they were able to do that against Alabama, I'm going to say they should be able to do it against UTSA. And they've known, they've known since the sunset on Saturday last week, that's probably how they're going to have to win this game upcoming. I'm going to put this at a five and a half. Let's go five and a half, only because of the quarterback situation. And UTSA is coming in their prime. You're talking about a Super Bowl there. So five and a half, I think Texas defensively can win the game, though. The last one that I'm looking at, and this one, I'm circling it right now for my own personal amusement because it could very much have every given Saturday tour implications riding on it. Tulane is at Kansas State. Now, they don't really care about that in Manhattan, Kansas, and I'm going to tell you why. Because they play Oklahoma next week. They go to Norman next week. They open conference play, and everyone's attention Aside from Oklahoma in the Big 12, which we're going to talk about in a second, is who else, whom else amongst us could win this conference? Well, K-State is everyone's sleeper. What happens if they drop a game before they go into Oklahoma? That brings us to this Saturday. Tulane's not a four or five touchdown dog in this. Tulane is a 14-point dog. Crazier things have happened in the past six days, friends. And so I'm putting this one at a six. Now, I will say this. As good as Tulane's looked in the stat sheet, They certainly have not had that run defense flexed like it's about to against Deuce Vaughn, which gives me a little comfort. You know, let me back the upset meter down to about a four. Because as I'm talking it out with you, as is often the case, my mind is changing. There's a lot more consistency to be had if I play this thing out 100 times in having the run game Kansas State does. And I also don't think that we're so far into this era of people believing in Kansas State again that anything about the program has gotten complacent or anything has developed a look-ahead nature to it. And so I actually do think that K-State's going to be able to take care of business. What I don't want you to do is I don't want you to turn this on and see them win 31 to 23 and say, oh, wow, well, that's disappointing. It's not disappointing. Tulane's a pretty good team. Uh, The line's 14. Know your point spreads, kids. This is what they taught me in middle school. Know your point spreads because that provides the context and the backdrop, the proper one for what you're seeing on Saturdays. I'm going to put this at a four. We're going to keep an eye on it. The highest level we rose to here was a five with Notre Dame, and I'm really keeping an eye on that one. 
But look, we didn't go anywhere past like a two last week on the upset meter, and I was made a fool of. I didn't enjoy it. I had multiple apologies to issue, and I, I'm not apologizing this Sunday night regardless of what happens. So take that for what it is. Guys, thanks for watching Late Kick. Make sure to leave a comment. I love interacting with you. But most of all, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. That's how we keep all of this free.